Everyone here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome to our our inaugural Barn Box uh, live chat. Um, this is the first time we've done the you do live live chat. Yep. So um, this is my friend Kaya. Hello. She's more than a friend. She works for us. Um, she's our wizard of a graphic designer, and. Um, has created um, some of the beautiful downloadable pieces that you see and all of our advertising and our Instagram and um, we love her. <laughs> so welcome Kaya. Yay. Hello, thank you. Um, well, how did everybody like their barn box? Is anybody out there to tell us? <laughs> Yeah, five people. Awesome. Here, so feel free. Can we to... can, can we see everybody or just no? Us? So they can see us. Oh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so see. it's so strange um, because when you're on Zoom, you can see everything. You know? Yeah, I'm gonna just pull in a little bit closer to yeah. you because I feel like I'm really far away. <laughs> That's better. That's way better. Yeah. Um. So um. This month, we thought we'd treat everybody to some really beautiful cashmere from Mongolia. It's um, it's just really full and soft and lively. And hopefully, you're all knitting with it already so you can um, actually experience it. And, um, and if you haven't started knitting with it yet because you're not sure which pattern you want to make, we can chat about that. You can ask questions and... Um, I'll try to help you figure it out what you want to make. Um, <clears throat> so the cashmere is a two ply. It's, it's actually a fingering weight. What they call a fingering weight is a very fine fingering weight. Um, if you look at your yarn conversion chart that Kaya made, um, it would fall into the super fine category. Um, you can knit this cashmere on needles up to size six for really um, very open lacy type of things. Um, if you like a little more stitch definition and a little more, um, sharply defined motifs and depth, you would want to knit this on a smaller needle. So the, the white thistle scarf, which I designed with this yarn and which we published just before barn box went live um, is knit on size two and a half, um, three millimeter needles, um, which is a fairly small size, but it's, it's not super tiny. And because the yarn has a nice full hand, it doesn't feel like it's too small. The, the needle sizes is, is nice because it goes with the diameter of, of this yarn and the, and the elasticity of this yarn. So cashmere doesn't have any elasticity. It's um, it's a very lax, um, non-springy fiber. And so it tends to feel thin when you're knitting with it. And using, <clears throat> using smaller needles may seem frightening to some people, but the smaller needles actually give you more control over the stitches when you're knitting with it. So um, for for very, very fine yarns or very silky yarns or slippery yarns, or um, in this case, non-elastic yarns that don't have any, any body, uh, a really small needle is nice. Um, it can actually be your friend um, because it does give you more control. And lots of times with when people are knitting lace and they're having trouble kind of feeling like that they do have control over their knitting, I often recommend that they try going down um, a needle size, like a quarter millimeter needle size to see if that helps improve how it feels. So that's my little lecture about, <laughs> about working with cashmere and kind of how to make the most of it and, and enjoy it the most as well. Of course, the best way to enjoy cashmere is to have knit with it and to have blocked it so that you can wear it because that's the real Catchola of cashmere. That's the payout is having something that just feels really beautiful against your skin. Cashmere will block out insanely well because it doesn't have any springiness. So whatever shape you block it to, it will stay that shape. 
and it will not spring back to any perceived original shape. It will uh, lose its memory <laughs> quite easily and, um, and block out nice and big. So lots of times you can get cashmere to block out twice as big as your finished knitted piece. So a little bit of cashmere goes a long way. And that little um, two ounce skein that, um, that you got in your barn box shipment has a full 400 yards and will knit um, a really nice length scarf. The white thistle scarf is, I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's I think 68 or 70 inches in length, which is a really nice size for making knots and wrapping twice or just hanging loose as well. It also blocks out to 10 inches wide, which is a nice generous width. And the pattern of course has several sizes so you can make it even bigger and even more luxurious <laughs> if you have more yarn to knit with. Keep in mind though, that um, a piece that is designed for cashmere is um, the finish size is dependent on the, the behavior of cashmere. If you knit this scarf or stole with a springy, Cormo lace or a merino lace, you're going to find that you may, it may not block out to the dimensions stated on the pattern because that yarn will want to retract and have more body. And a good remedy for that would just be to knit an extra repeat of length or even two repeats of length um, so that you can get that desired length in your scarf or stole. And, um, even if you're not using the, the cashmere, which relaxes so beautifully. Perfect. Um, we have a question okay. from Susan. Uh, she's asking any tips for blocking cashmere? Same as wool? Yes. Um, and in, this is an undyed cashmere, so um, you can soak it in hot, hot water, as hot as you can get it from the tap with a little wool soap. Do use a wool soap that's pH balanced for your knitwear because anything um anything strong that's a detergent like a dish soap or or woolite or something like that will um will damage the fiber because this fiber is very fine um so soak it in very hot water let the water cool that usually takes about an hour um rinse uh, in another bath of water Usually you want to rinse the, you want to use rinse water that is a similar temperature to the water you took the scarf out from. So when, once the wash water has cooled, kind of take note of the temperature and run a similar temperature for rinsing the, the garment. Uh, roll it in a towel to squeeze out the excess moisture. And then for, for rectangular pieces and um, triangles that are, um, you know, kind of regular triangles. Blocking wires are a really nice uh, tool to use for blocking because you'll get nice, sharp, straight edges everywhere. And um, they're not, it doesn't make your blocking faster. They're still a little bit tedious to thread through the edges of the fabric, but they do give you razor sharp edges and kind of beautiful, um, you know, beautiful edges that don't distract from the stitch patterns. And then just pin it out and let it dry. If you like, um, while it's still pinned out, you can steam it in place. That will encourage the, the cashmere to bloom and come to its full halo. Um, and if you don't have a steamer, don't worry about it. You can unpin it and start wearing it. And that will also cause the, the halo to, to come out from the cashmere yarn. Um, Elizabeth mentioned that pretty long, uh, long enough for me. <laughs> Just one skein. Is that, is yeah. that knitter girl, Elizabeth? <laughs> uh, and she also asked, um, how aggressive did you block the cashmere scarf? I blocked fairly aggressively. Um, I, I actually could have blocked it longer if I would have, 
let it be skinnier. So I, but I did want to get that 10 inch width. So I blocked out my width. Um, I, I blocked it out kind of in both directions um, a little bit at a time. So I blocked out the width and I blocked out the length and then I worked on the width again and then a little bit more of the length so that um, I was easing the, sh the scarf out to the final dimensions because I did want to get it to its fullest um, as, as much as I could stretch it. You don't have to do that. You, you can, um, you can block it less and it'll, it'll have slightly more depth, but I have to say like this, this really, the pattern really does have a lot of depth, even yeah. if you stretch the heck out of it. The texture is amazing. Yeah. And the, what, you know, in designing for this piece, I knew, I knew I was going to be working with cashmere. So I, I purposely chose um, a fairly heavily textured motif one that has a lot of contrasting areas between reverse stockinette and um, and the and then the stockinette ribs, so that those ribs would really pop from from the background. And then there are you know there are all these frothy open work areas that also stand out. So it, it is a heavily embossed stitch pattern, um, not difficult to work at all, but. Um, there, there are a lot of stitch changes in order to provide depth, but the, but the pearl areas and the knit areas are fairly large within the motif. If this was a more mixed pattern, a more all over mixed pattern, the stitch definition would not be as distinct. Mm -hmm. So if this was like little tiny squares of two by two stitches, you might not get, you know, the, the effect might be kind of meh, but, um, but the motif being larger with um, larger negative areas um, definitely gives it more uh, a more powerful um, definition and um, kind of embossed look. And maybe we can show them. Oh yeah, here I am <laughs> holding it in my lap. But uh, let's see. So you can see that it really does pop. Yeah. And even at a distance, um, it's the, you know, we're in artificial <laughs> light. Daylight would really show off the um, kind of positive and negative space, but it's there. Trust me. <laughs> I it's think so soft too. Like just, it's like air. It, it's, I never <laughs> want to take it off. <laughs> It's dangerous. It, it, <laughs> it's like having air just yeah. brush against your skin. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Elizabeth also asked, is, I probably will butcher this, um, Eucalan considered uh -huh. a good wool soap? Oh, yes. Okay. Eucalan is really nice. Um, the What you want to look for in a, in a wool soap is um, just... I can't, I honestly, off the top of my head, can't name, you know, the chemical ingredients, but you just want to make sure that the label doesn't say anything like detergent or cleans grease and stains. You don't want something like that. You want it to specifically say that it is a soap and that it, because soap is different than detergent. Detergent dissolves grease and lanolin um, and natural oils. And soap just cleans, just lifts dirt up off the fiber, which is what you want. Um, it, if, if it says it's pH balanced and um, that it's gentle on your fibers, that is, you know, those are things that you can't lie about on labels anymore. <laughs> so um, um, it should be fine for your in fact, um, you know, if, if in doubt, shampoo is uh, is a good wool soap because if it's something you would put on your own hair, then it will be fine for animal hair as well. Perfect. Uh, and you can use conditioner as well if you like. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, someone also said that this pattern brings to mind fern frost. So. Oh, a little bit, yeah. Fern frost has this back and forth sinuous pattern um and i was looking for you know fern frost is one of our all-time most popular scarf patterns and 
it is knit in yarn that has similar yardage and weight. And so um, I did, I always look back on my older patterns with, when I'm using a similar yarn to see, you know, what needle size did I use and what, you know, what kind of stitch pattern um, really is, defines this yarn beautifully and enhances the, the fiber. So I, I'm always referring back to, to my old patterns when I'm designing new ones. And I definitely looked at the pattern um, to get a gist of what, how many stitches would make the right size and what needle size I would use and um, what size motif would work more, most powerfully with, with this fiber. Perfect. Uh, so I just messaged everyone. Uh, <laughs> we're interested in seeing what pattern you guys all chose for this time around. Um, yeah. <laughs> we know that uh, white thistle is definitely a popular one <laughs> right now, but did anyone choose a different pattern? Feel free to comment. <laughs> um, Let me just hold up. So um, <laughs> um, <I'm sorry. laughs> this is the, this is twice as nice, right? Yeah, I've, yeah. The hat is. Oh, the label's right okay. on it. Duh. Someone just <laughs> twice said, as nice. Still yeah. petting the yarn for now. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, and the, these sessions are um, are you know a way to maybe find out more depth about the designs. You know, maybe sway your opinion a little bit. But um, twice as nice is part of a set that includes a whole bunch of two fur patterns. So twice as nice, two for the money, um, two faced friend, um, love me two times and double happiness are all in the family of this pattern because they all have the same motif, which is, um, a cable and lace. Can you see it? It's a cable and lace combination that when reversed, is an equally pretty but kind of different um, half chevron pattern. So the cable only shows on one side. So that's why they're all called, you know, um, twice. They're all have two in the name or twice in the name because you can wear them either way. And um, the original set was knit with a mink and cashmere combination yarn. It was. Yeah, mink yarn. And and the mink yarn behaves very similarly to the cashmere. It's just not quite as soft. Um, but it is really, um, has beautiful drape, beautiful bloom, super soft, super rare fiber. Um, just really nice to knit with. The If you can imagine it, the, the cowl that matches of course is very much like the hat only you know without the top and it just it just puddles up on your neck and makes really soft folds which are important because the folds are what keeps you warm in lacy pieces lace has lots of holes in it and you would think that it wouldn't be warm because it's semi sheer but the holes and the folds actually encapsulate air, which is really what keeps you warm. So a shawl that's all sort of folded and draped around your neck can actually keep you warmer than a heavy scarf can. Um, it's not the wool that keeps you warm or the fiber, it's the air that it captures that keeps you warm. And with the halo, the halo acts like a little network of fibers to capture air, even in places where there's no intentional stitching to do that. <clears throat> and then the third design is um, the Empreinte Crescent Shawl. Now, in this sample, it's knit in a, in a kind of a rustic lace. Let me just put this up near the... It's, it's very dark, so it's hard to see the motif exactly. Um, or the, um, the light and dark, mm -hmm. the play of light on it is not going to be too apparent in this session. Uh, but we have great pictures on our website that you can look at to see more. The original design was knit in a Lincoln long wool lace yarn that 
has about the same diameter as the cashmere. So ounce for ounce, it has about the same number of yards. But it's a completely different character fiber. It's kind of stiff. Um, it does bloom really well. There's lots of kind of hairiness to it. Um, it has a lot of body and it's very springy. Um, it, it also holds its blocking well. Lincoln is a long wool. So in many ways, it behaves like the cashmere and being completely different at the same time, a completely different feel at the same time or a different hand. The cashmere is super soft and drapey and airy. And this is um, rustic and has body. It's, it's just really different. It's okay to like one or the other, but it's even better to like to appreciate both, you know, all wool. Yeah. <laughs> They're all unique in their own way. That would be absolutely gorgeous and the cashmere. It would be. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. It would require more than one skein. These crescent shawls, unfortunately, take a lot of yarn. Mm -hmm. But um, and I, I believe this is a medium size that I have here, which is which is pretty large. And I think I think two skeins will make at least um, the medium, if not the large as well. The. The lace edging on this is so pretty. There's only this short edge, but it really finishes off the end of the shawl nicely. And you can kind of see when I hold it up against my sweater, how pretty that pattern is. It's um, a large motif. I believe it's over 30 stitches and it has a deep, deep scallop in the middle that's natural to the, the stitch pattern itself. So while you do want to block that out to make the most of it, the stitch pattern will create that scallop for you really nicely. It's such a pretty pattern. Uh, so I was going to type this out, but it's really difficult. <laughs> um, so for all the white thistle fans, are you going to keep the scarf for yourself or oh. <laughs> gift it away? <laughs> it's a it's a shop sample for now. Okay. Um, you know, I don't I didn't have I don't usually get to keep the things I knit, yeah. at least not at first. Yeah. Oftentimes I knit I always knit things that I want. But I don't often get one <laughs> until yeah. later. Or when, when we decide not to have the yarn anymore or mm. it can't be found, I, I take the sample home yeah. to, to wear it. But to be honest, um, I'm a very plain, I like plain tailored things. And I'm always on the move. So wearing something fancy and dressy mm. isn't really my, my MO. Um, so well, I like, you know, what I have on is what I wear all the time. Yeah, I guess it's another question, uh, though, for the people watching as well. Uh, oh, we already have a few people. I Wait. already know everyone's like, I'm keeping it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not giving mine away. Yeah. 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 Um, and if I didn't have, if I didn't feel like the shop was my closet, mm. <laughs> um, I probably would feel that way too. You know, I would, I would keep it here. Um, but basically the, the shop, our house, the same, same, you know, I can go over there and look at it and play yeah. with it <laughs> anytime. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I would keep it as well or whoever's getting it. <laughs> like they must must yeah. be very special. <laughs> We'll put it in their will back to you. Yeah. <laughs> I just get it back. <laughs> I do like I give I give really nice knits to people I love and who I know are, uh, will really enjoy them. I'm not. I don't only knit for knit worthy people. I feel like if you if you get a knit from me, it's now yours to take care of. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people come to you and, sit and apologize and be like, Oh, I ruined that scarf you gave me. I'm like, it was yours to ruin. You know, um, <laughs> you're not getting another one, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was yours to take care of mm -hmm. or not. So, right. um, it's okay. Um, but I'm not replacing it. <laughs> no. Awesome. 
All right. Well, does anyone have any other questions relating to patterns they're working on, the yarn, or just barn box in general? Yes. A little birdie told me that several people had asked about cast-ons um, mm -hmm. for these pieces. And um, I don't have, I use one cast on for everything. <laughs> I don't do special cast ons um, almost ever. So my grandma's cast on, which I did record in a YouTube video. So you can find it on YouTube um, is the cast on I use for everything. I just make sure that when I'm casting on for lace, I keep the cast on as stretchy as possible as I'm doing it. And with a, um, with a, so that my grandma's cast on is a long tail type cast on or a two ended cast on. You have to measure out the yarn tail before you begin your cast on. And when you use it up, it's gone. You, you know, if you screw up the number of stitches, you have to take out the cast on and start again, or spit splice an additional piece of yarn on. Anyway, when you're doing that kind of cast on, one of the strands creates a bottom edge along the, the cast on edge. And the other strand creates the loops that go over the needle. So there's two things going on at the same time. The key to getting a stretchy cast on with that, with a long tail type, is that when you, when you create your loop around the needle and tighten the other strand, just don't yank it all the way tight. You want to gently pull it and leave some ease in it. Uh, and you can test that out you know, by casting on 10 or so stitches and then stretching it on the needle. If it doesn't stretch at all along that bottom foundation, you're going to be in trouble when it comes to shaping scallops on, on your lace edge. You won't get any. It'll It'll just flatten your cast on edge. If you can stretch it, you know, pretty liberally, then you're in good shape. If, if you can't do that, then you might want to explore a different type of cast on. There are many, many different types and several different specifically stretchy casts on that you can research on the internet. Uh, literally just type stretchy cast on and a bunch of videos will come up for you. Um, is that the same for the bind off? Yeah, pretty much. Binding, binding off is, uh, there aren't as many different types of bind off, but a stretchy bind off is, um, is recommended. Again, I do, I do the same bind off almost always. It's a, it's called a suspended bind off where you, um, in the process of binding off, you retain the stitch on the left hand needle so it stretches it as you're binding off and that keeps it nice and springy but of course just as with cast ons there are multiple stretchy bind offs that you can use and and they're very useful um around the top of a sock a toe up sock or um with a lace edge or even sweater edges can you know the neck edge of a sweater needs to be stretchy enough to go over your head, but springy enough to lie flat when you're wearing it. So learning to either manipulate your own cast on to be all things or um, learn different cast ons to, for different applications. Um, it's one of those um, kind of side jobs of the knitter to um, develop uh, or to gain new techniques um, from time to time to, to help yourself, to put in your toolbox. Perfect. Uh, we had a question. How does your grandma's cast on work with your cast off? Anything special? No, I don't, the, I don't bind off with my grandma's cast on. So there's no grandma's, there's no grandma's bind off. Okay. Uh, grandma's bind off was really just the simplest of, of bind offs. She just always did the same thing. Mm. Um, I don't, the suspended bind off that I use is not one that I learned from her. Um, and I can't remember her doing anything different than the most simple type of bind off. Um, it does look different on one end than the other. And some people, um, you know, don't like that. 
but those people are free to explore. I, I never, once I bind off, I don't look at one end or the other to check that they're the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just not, um, I'm, I embrace that the differences, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's okay that they're not perfectly symmetrical, the same. <laughs> Okay, um, so maybe we can show off the printables if you guys haven't already seen. Yeah, maybe you have. Um, so Kaya made these um, these pieces for you. Um, one one is the is the yarn conversion chart, which I referred to just a little while ago. It has different classes of yarns and what. Typically what needles you might use, um, what the UK kind of um, terminology for the same type of yarn might be. And um, this is just a guide to help you figure out when something calls for fingering yarn, um, what are you really looking for? Um, What's the difference between, you know, lace cobweb and just regular lace weight? Um, it, it's handy and I think you'll like it. <laughs> and you guys can print this out for free, um, through our website. Right. You can download it. Yep. And we also have these. Cute... And we'll probably follow up at some point. We actually discussed a couple of mm-hmm. other types of these handy charts to have. Um, I don't remember what they were now, but she wrote them down. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the note paper is also really sweet. Uh, I love this. I want, I want office notepads made from these. <laughs> I love that the sheep is looking back at the bar and like, can I go back in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, those are super cute. Yep. And you can download as many of these as you want and use them however you want. If you write us a note, yeah. <laughs> you can write it on this paper. Send it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any more questions or comments? Um, we have, um, by the way, a really, really exciting yarn box coming up next time. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> Stay tuned. <clears throat> we're we're we super excited. Three years in the making or something like that. Um I think you'll like it. Yep. All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions or comments, uh, did we cover all the stuff we were supposed to? I think, I think unless someone wants to come, Oh, <laughs> someone said, may I just say, I am grateful for this bit of fun. We oh, are too. oh, we are too. And you know, um, I wish we, I wish we could, I wish this was a little more interactive where we we could see your progress or your face. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Just to you guys live in a virtual world. It's a little weird. I know. Um, but please come back next time. Um, join our Ravelry, um, discussions. Mm -hmm. Those are ongoing and lots of fun. We have the best moderators. Um, and they are the most fun. They really are. (laughs) Um, and I guess that's it. Yeah. All right. Signing All right. off, you guys. Thank Bye. You guys Happy knitting. Go knit.